Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everyone. If you want to move forward in life, you need to be inquisitive. You need to be curious like a child and ask questions. Are you asking the right questions in all different situations? Could be a, a game changer for you. And we're going to look at that today with an inspirational speaker, success coach. He's a life coach, best selling author, and he's back with us. Dr. Barry Fleet is on the program. Barry, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you doing? I'm I'm well. I'm worried because my job is to ask questions. <laughs> well, that, it is your job. And, and you have spent a lot of time honing your craft on thinking about the right questions to ask. I'll be honest. I don't even I don't even think about it. I okay. really don't. It just when I feel it and I try to ask questions that I think that others would like a listener or a viewer would ask. You know, I come from that, that curious standpoint, but it's often been said, one of the most important things you can do in life is ask questions, especially a salesperson. You know, they're, they're trying to, to make a sale um, and trying to key into what that person that they're speaking with might want to buy. But instead of just spewing, oh, you need this and you need that, ask questions, ask questions. Right. And if you don't have the answer, it's okay to say, sure you know what let me check on that and i'll get back to you some people absolutely will, uh, it's not it's not a sign of weakness it's actually intelligence let me double check but in life in general when we talk about asking the right kind of questions how do you mean that where do we go with that well there, there there's several ways i think about it um, one is when when people come to me um they they often ask i, I want to know why i am the way i am hmm. and and my stock answer is you know, we could spend a lot of time and maybe come up with an answer, but you would still be the way you are. So instead of asking, why am I the way I am? Let's ask, how do I want to be? Hmm. Because, because that moves us somewhere. It, it moves you forward instead yeah. of marinating on the current situation and you're still asking a question. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so, um, I mean, that, that's the kind of thing. So I, I talk about there are interesting questions and there are, are important questions and figuring out why I am the way I am is, is pretty interesting, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not important. What is important is how do I want to be and what do I need to do to get from where I am to where I want to be? Well, let me ask a question in that situation. Can it be sometimes helpful to realize what has happened in your past, maybe in your childhood? Because we've said before that a lot of what you're exposed to between the ages of basically birth and seven can really dictate the direction that you're going to go in life because those are the beliefs that have been put in there, whether you wanted them to be or not. Um, can it be impactful to, to realize that, to ask that question sometimes? Well, I think, I think, what happens is as we as we start to move forward, then the the blockages start to emerge. And mm. and we then we can go back and say, you know okay. what? When I was five years old, my mother hit me over the head with a clarinet or you know <laughs> whatever it is. Right, right, right. <laughs> um and but but the focus is always on moving forward rather than um and like I said, as we're as we're moving forward, we we sometimes become aware of of some of the blockages that are embedded in our history. I totally see that. And, and like in your example, it could be somebody again, we're just going crazy hypothetical here, but it could be somebody that has an aversion to music that has woodwind instruments. They just say, I don't know what it is. You know, Barry, I love music and I, I just can't, this music, this certain type of music, I, it just bothers me, but I want to like that music. And then, like you said, things get uncovered. Oh, when I was five, my mother used to hit me over the head with a clarinet. Of course, you know, we're, we're being facetious here, but right, it's the same kind right. of principle. It, it, it is. Um, but, but then the other question that, that comes along out of that is, so why, why is it that liking this kind of music has become so important to you? Mm, okay. And and that could be because, again, hypothetical, uh, my son is a virtuoso and I can't go to any concerts. 
I can't okay. stand it. I don't know what it is. Okay. So, so then the question becomes, so how do I support my son? Do I really need, do I really need to like this kind of music to support my son? Or is my showing up my way of supporting him? You know, so I, it, it, it's getting clear on what the goal is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I see it. I know we're just using a crazy example, but it is, it is clear in all different threads. And the answer might be, okay, it's enough to show up and support him. But then maybe somebody might say, no, I really want to appreciate his creativity, but I can't listen to it. And I don't know why. That okay. could be another, you know, could be a goal, whatever it might be. Sure. Um, but the, 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 the power, like I said, the powerful question is, is the why question. Mm. Um, you know, I, I we talked before about um, why do I get out of bed in the morning? Um, and having a good enough reason, having a reason to get out of bed because I want to do something today rather than because this is what I have to do. You know, I, right. I, the alarm goes off and I hit, hit, keep hitting the snooze button because I, I'm dreading the day. Um, and if I ask the question, what could I look forward to today? Because there's something in the day that you could look forward to. Um or what am I looking forward to instead of, ah, oh, here I go again. Is that a, a big thing? Because I will, I'll tell you what motivates me is having things to look forward to. And they yeah. could be the littlest thing. You know, I bought a steak the other night going home tonight. I'm going to cook that thing again. It's just, you know, hypothetical, but it could be a little thing, but that's what drives me is is that you as well? Is that many of us? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it again, it all depends on on our mindset. And that's why I think it's it's important to ask these questions. Um, what is it that brings you joy? Just asking that question. And when when you ask that question, then you know what? It's cooking a steak tonight on the grill. That's going to that's I'm going to enjoy that. Right. I look forward to that. Um, but but I, I think a question that we that we don't always ask is what brings me joy um one of the things i i ask clients often is what are you doing for fun because what i what i usually hear is this litany of obligations and people being feeling crunched and not having enough time for everything but but where is the fun in that and it's it's astounding to me how many people it, it's like it's like hitting them with a with a brick in the head it's like wait Where's where where's fun? There's, there's no fun here. Yeah, yeah. I don't do anything for fun. I didn't realize that until Barry said so. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's interesting how we are programmed to look at the negative. Like you just said, what's what's your what's the joy in your day? We don't look at it that way. We look at it as, oh, well, I got to get up. I got to do that. I got to make sure I get that done, and I got to do that. We're not looking for those little high points. Um, no. Today had a busy day. I took a, had a well, yeah, like a half hour. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. <laughs> First warm yeah. day in this area in a long time. And it was yep. just like, I'm gonna put the windows down. I'm gonna take five minutes. And then, you know what? That was kind of joyful. I know it sounds minimal, but you know what? It felt good. It is, and and that's the kind of thing. Uh, again, um, what do I have to be grateful for? Hmm. Um, and. You can be grateful for the fact that you were the, the weather's gorgeous today and, and you have the resources to go get a cup of coffee from Starbucks. Sure. sure. And, and you had the time in the, the window to do it. Um, and, you know, it's interesting how life, you know, happens. I go, I'm, I'm thinking about going anyway. I get the mail and there is a company that's soliciting for something in a very, you know, crafty way they're doing it uh, in a card with a business card. So it's, it's just a little, you know, no card yeah. and their business card. They put a Starbucks gift card just for, Hey, <laughs> you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be a, you know, a salesperson here, but you know, I'd love to talk over a cup of coffee, you know, uh, just call me or, you know, go on my website. And it's, it's a national company, actually. Uh, it was a little gift card in there. So it was almost yeah. like, Oh, meant to be. All right, let me use that. And I'll, I'll call them and, you know, we'll have a conversation. Don't know if it's going to lead anywhere, but I appreciate it. Yeah. Very clever, very clever marketing, right? You um, never know. No, you don't. 
Uh, but but I, again, asking the question, what do I have to be grateful for today? We, we talked about that before in the gratitude journal sure. and doing that at the end of the day, looking back and, and reflecting and writing down what I have to be grateful for. Um, one of the other powerful questions uh, that we can ask ourselves is, what is one habit I need to stop? Hmm. Um, or what is one habit that I would be well served to develop? Interesting questions. You know, I look at the habit. I, I'm thinking about that. And it's challenging, too, because aren't habits usually connected to something positive, pleasurable? You're not going to do it unless there's that connection. So that's why it's even harder to break that, what that habit might be. Absolutely. And again, mm -hmm. so what when we look at our bad habits, to ask ourselves, what, what's, what am I gaining from this? Because I'm doing it to gain something. Right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. Um, so what's a better way to, to meet the need that's driving this bad habit? So I'm not denying that, that the need is there, that I'm looking for payoff, but there's often better ways of uh, meeting the need than whatever our bad habit has become. Is that something, Barry, that you also help people out with? as they try to move their life forward, let's say, you know, somebody uh, meets with you, they want to be more successful at work. Maybe they want to change careers, got a couple of habits they're not really happy with or proud of. Do you also help them, you know, break those habits or at least um, analyze them, talk about them? I, I do. And, and I help people create a plan. And it always starts, like you said, with, with little steps, little steps, um, break things down, um, here's a uh, thing that's coming to my mind right now. So um, I teach at university. Um, I, my students, one of the requirements is a major term paper. And, and what I tell them to do is if you look at writing 15 pages of content, that can be overwhelming. But if I say, I'm going to spend 15 minutes today doing some writing and some thinking, and, and I do that five days a week, that's an hour and a quarter that I've in, I've invested, but they'll be amazed at how much progress they've made mm -hmm. with those little steps instead of sitting down like some of them will the night before and just yep stream of consciousness. Yep. And now it's work. Now it's work. It is. It is. And there's no fun in that. There's no joy. But you know what? You can look at it from the joy standpoint where you could say, well, you know what? I'm going to give an hour tonight to work on that. It's going to be a positive experience because it's not going to drain me. And I'm going to feel like I got something. I I'm going to feel like I started moving forward or I'm moving forward in the, in the, in the goal. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the other questions. Um, so when, when something happens at our, at our home, um, my wife and I have the standing joke about, so whose fault was this? And 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 the and the joke is if we can just figure out whose fault it was, then everything is good. Um, and 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 sometimes we have that. You talk about the negative thinking. Sometimes we have that habit of we'd rather blame than fix. And and rather than spending time figuring out whose fault it is, that might be an important thing to figure out later. But the it, but the question now is, what do I need to do now to make it better? What do I need? What, what's the appropriate action for right now? Given that this has happened and somebody it's somebody's fault, hypothetically, mm. they all be true, but what, what needs to happen now? Let's, let's do that. You find a lot of times it's, it's somebody's own fault that the situation is happening, but they don't want to put the blame on themselves. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, I'm, that, that often happens, I'm thinking now about a, a couple that I'm working with, and, um, and she, um, she had an affair, um, and it was, it's one of those things, I don't want to get too far off topic, but uh, so why does the, I always wonder, so why does the affair happen? And my experience is that affairs happen for one of two reasons, either because the person wants to get out of the marriage, and this will make it happen, or they're they're meeting a need 
that will allow them to stay in the marriage. There's something that a need that they're not getting in the marriage. And if they can get that need met somewhere else, it allows them to stay in the marriage. Um, I, and I want to add to that, that sometimes those, you know, people that are, uh, not being experiencing infidelity, it also goes back. There could be reasons, you know, from their past, let's say their, their parents, their, you know, but if it's a woman, her relationship with her father, all of that comes into play. Um, so it's not always the other, the other person in the marriage. It's not always their fault for not, you know, providing this in the marriage. Right. Um, but again, in, instead of looking at whose fault is this, I think there's always a place for me to, to say, what part did I play in, in this? Sure. Um, and I think that's a really mature response when anything bad happens. Um, and I, and I sometimes, uh, think about maybe, maybe I'm only 5% wrong. And the other person is 95% wrong. But what I, what I have control over is the 5% that I own. And, and the extent to which I'm willing to own my 5% is the extent to which the, the, the relationship has a chance of getting better or the problem has a chance of being solved. Um, so again, mm -hmm. instead of looking at blame, which is easy to do, to take responsibility for whatever part I played in this. And that's another way of, of moving forward. And I guess what we're talking about here is, and question that, you know, question, question, question everything. Do you find yourself, like, let's say you walk into a Starbucks, uh, you're just talking with somebody. Do you question them? Like, do you just throw a question like, you have, hey, what time do you guys serve decaf until whatever? Um, do you find yourself doing that from time to time? Um, the question that I, that I always ask is, and, and I ask the server, um, what time do you get off? What time do you get to go home? Uh, because what I, what I've learned from asking that question, I've had some amazing stories come out of that hmm. because, because it, it allows the, the cashier to be recognized as a person who has a life beyond this job. Interesting. And, and I've had people talk about the two other jobs they're juggling to try and make things fit uh, and talk about uh, a special needs child at home that, that they're torn between being there, but they need to make money. Um, hmm. But just ask um, what time you get to go home today? What time, what time are you off? Um, and invariably their face will light up um, with having been recognized that way. So I, I find it, it's a great conversation starter um, and it's a great way of connecting and it's a great way of leaving people with a smile on their face. Because they were recognized. Yeah. 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 The, the only danger in that I would think is the way you phrase it. Oh, this guy, Barry is trying to pick me up. <laughs> right. What time, what time are you getting off today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I guess if you, you approach it, you know, you know, how's your day going? You talk like that and just, you know, then it organically flows into that the next question or maybe the third question in you know what time are you done today you know what right. do you got going on you know yeah. just asking a question yeah um so I, that, those are the kind of questions that that i ask strangers do you find that in our society we don't do that that often because of the fear of being judged whereby you know i i would think back to 50 years in my mind what life might have been like in those situations where people just talked, it was, it was a free flow conversation. You know, right. they're just, you know, doesn't seem like we do that part of it, you know, our society, but also uh, we're always in a rush, you know? Yeah. What, what do I do to get the, the coffee onto the app? I walk in, I grab it. It's already paid for. I'm out the door. Didn't even, and you know what? I have to tell you, I don't like it anymore. I yeah. used to always walk in, knew the people working there. They would know what I want. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was, it was a nice feeling both ways. And now I feel it's so completely impersonal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's, it's wise and important that we have these conversations, but so what, what are we doing with technology? Technology um, was created to serve us. Um, 
Yeah. But, but we have become the servants of it. hundred percent. And it's interesting wow. how it was created, you know, even social media to be social, but sometimes it works in the other way where, yeah, okay, we connect with our friends and family and things like that, but we don't leave our domain. You know, we don't, especially teenagers right now, they don't know how to talk. No. And you know, with all the social media, there's more depression yes. and there's, there's more people experiencing loneliness and isolation. Yep. It went the other way. <laughs> it went the other way because we've lost the human factor, which is what, what we're referring to. Yeah. Um, and so that, that becomes another important question. How do I regain my humanity? How do I stop being a cog in a wheel? Um, how do I get back to just having a conversation with somebody that is, is purely from curiosity and interest um, and connection, making a connection? How do we do that? I think it starts with, with an intention. I have to become aware that this is, this is an important con contribution for me to make to the world. So as I go about my day, and I, I talked before about in the morning, how am I going to be today? Um, and for me to decide, I'm going to be engaging. Um, I'm going to meet people. I'm going to look at them face to face. I'm going to say hi. I, if, it, you know, if, it, if it seems uh, appropriate, I'll say, what time do you get off? How's your day going? Um, but but it, it, it starts with an intention to create personal connections. And, and not be afraid. Yeah, and not be afraid. Yeah, I, absolutely. Because afraid of being judged potentially. I just had a flash. I was at the bank yesterday, and they had a marketing poster up. And you know what the 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 campaign was? Interestingly human. Mm. <laughs> because it's like they know that you know banks can be very impersonal now. A lot of people do banking online. I do, but there are some times where I have to go in to cash a check or whatever it might be. Right. And they're trying to rehumanize the bank just for the reasons that we're talking about. Yes. And and since you brought that up, um, I make a point to almost never use the drive through. Same. I want to go in and see the people and be seen. This this is so again, it, it's that how do I how do I create and nurture my humanity. A hundred percent. I agree with you. And you know what? More times than not, it takes longer at the drive-through anyway. Uh, thank you. You can't hear each other sometimes. There's, a, you know, issues. Or, I've had to just be face-to-face. -face. I, I, back in the day, I used to like the drive-through. So I think it's more, we're social beings. We yeah. crave connection. And when it's not there, uh, something's missing and sometimes we can't put our finger on it. Just even the opportunity to ask a question. You can't do that on an app <laughs> more times right. than not. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in relationships, um, a lot of times we, we ask the question, what, what, why isn't this person being a better partner for me? Uh, and, and I think a better question is what kind of partner am I being? Um, hmm. Am I being the kind of partner that, that makes me desirable? Um, or, or am I so busy looking at, at what I can get or what I want? Um, another question that I've, that I've taught couples to use, uh, to think about is, what, what do I want for my partner? Not what do I want from them? What do I want for them? Hmm. Interesting, interesting question. Yeah. Um, because because that's something that will nurture the relationship as opposed to, to criticizing it. It puts it in a different perspective. Um, never thought of it, never thought of it in that way. We're always looking what we're trying to get out of life, situations, relationships, as opposed to what they're getting out of it. Yeah. Uh, you asked some you asked some interesting questions, Barry. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> Uh, we're just about out of time, I, and I question that. How does it go so fast? But it it does. It's um, good, yes. If somebody wants to connect with you on, on any level, or even just to ask you some questions, they just go to your website. That's your name. Is it dr? Dr. Barry Fleet. Dot com. yes. And it's Barry with one R. 
Barry with one R. It looks wrong. But... <laughs> uh, and I have to ask this question. Uh, I, I can't recall if I did. Um, how come one R? Um, so the story goes that when uh, my mother was carrying me, there was uh, uh, lots of conversation on both sides of the family about who I would be named for. And so my parents chose a relatively uncommon name and changed the spelling so that nobody could take credit <laughs> or, or, or both sides would be equally offended. Wow. And I, and, and I jokingly tell people, I, I take that extra R and use it for my middle initial. It, is it your middle name start with an R? Yeah, it does. So was that, was that, do you think they planned that out or just? The... No, they didn't plan that out. Wow. Um, I, I have the same middle name as my dad's first name. Yep. And I, as do I. Yeah. How interesting. And it's my, my best friend, his name is Gary, one R. Can't imagine spelling it with two, but actually, if I remember correctly, Gary Marshall, who I did a lot right. of TV production back in the 70s, I think he was two R's. Gary Marshall, yeah. pretty sure. Wow. Yeah. Uh, DR, one R. Well, no, wait. D R B A R Y F L E E T dot com. Barry, always. Always great talking with you. And uh, yeah, we raised some interesting questions, you know, about life and moving forward and connecting and uh, you're available. Free consultation if somebody wants to connect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go to my website. There's a way to get in touch with me. Um, you can text me. You can call me. You can email me. All those options are out there and I'm open to, to hearing from anybody. Excellent. Always great having you on. Thanks, Steve. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.